Hey guys, how's it going? Abby here. Welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Today's video, we're talking all about champions and how to stun them, specifically in Season of the Lost, but I'm going to give some general tips in here as well. This is targeted for new light players, for brand new Destiny players, or maybe you're coming back after a long time and you don't really know what champions are. This video is going to be for you. Also, a quick reminder, if you like the content, make sure to subscribe, leave a like on the video, and you can also become a member for additional benefits if you click the join button down below. All right, let's talk about Destiny Champions. These guys are added in endgame or difficult activities, and they're beefier yellow bar enemies that you need to take care of. And in most cases, in most of the endgame activities, killing all of them is going to lead to better rewards. For instance, in your legendary and master law sectors, if you get a champion's platinum, then you're gonna get the highest tier rewards. You have a better chance at getting an exotic from that law sector. Same with the nightfall, you wanna shoot for platinum rewards if you are going for those nightfall weapons. Now, if you're going for the 100 K score, it doesn't matter how many champions you kill or don't kill, but if you're going for the weapons, the ascendant shards, the exotics, all that good stuff, if you're going for rewards, you want to make sure to kill every champion that you see. There are three types of champions in Destiny so far anyway. First, we've got overload champions. These guys quickly regenerate their health when they're not stunned. So you have to make sure to continuously stun them and burst them down as quickly as possible when they are stunned. We also have barrier champions, which put up a barrier shield to regenerate health at about a third or a fourth of their health, depending on the difficulty of the activity. And then lastly, we have Unstoppable, which are going to charge you and your teammates, and they also take less damage when they're not stunned. In endgame activities, you're only going to encounter two out of the three of these champion types. For instance, in your Lost Sectors, the Legend and the Master, you're going to see we have Barrier and Overload here, and we have Barrier and Overload here. So you don't have to worry about Unstoppable. This makes it easier to pick anti-champion mods that you're going to use throughout the activity to take Take care of those champions. You'll also see champions in endgame activities like Empire Hunts. They won't appear in the lower versions, but if you go up to higher difficulties, you'll see them appear here in the modifiers list. So here we have Overload and Barrier. And similarly for the Nightfall, you're going to see no champions in the Adept level, but if you go on up to Hero, we'll see champions Unstoppable and Overload appearing here. And unfortunately, in this modifier screen, Destiny doesn't really tell us much about these champions. It just says they cannot be stopped without that anti-champion mod. So let's go into how you get these mods, where you slot them, how you actually stun the champions. All right, the first option and the most common option is going to be in your artifact. Your artifact is going to contain ways to stun all three of these champions every season. So for season of the lost, we have the Wayfinder's Compass. In here on the first column, you're going to see ways to stun all three of these different champions. You want to make sure to pick this up when you first start playing that season because all the XP that you earn through just doing normal stuff throughout Destiny, you're going to earn XP and be able to unlock these mods mods in the artifact. Now unlocking them doesn't mean that they're active right away. I kind of wish that that was a feature of the artifact. You're going to have to unlock the ones you want. So pick and choose which ones you want. You're going to want at least one for each champion type. So we've got anti-barrier auto rifle, overload bow, and unstoppable sidearm. You could also pick unstoppable pulse rifle. And there's also an overload sword mod here as well. But keep in mind this says six energy. So this is going to cost a lot more to slot it on your armor. And then once you go down further in your artifact, you're going to see some other anti-champion mods as well. This season we have unstoppable fusion rifles, which is great to pair with particle deconstruction. And we also have thermoclastic strike, which is going to give solar and stasis melee the ability to disrupt overload champions. So those are all the anti-champion mods we have currently on the artifact. You can also see where these artifact mods are going to be slotted on your armor. For instance, the first column here is all on your arms. You can see it here, anti-barrier auto rifle arms armor mod. So now we know that that goes on our arms. 
If we go over to Thermoplastic Strike, you'll see that this goes on our class item mod. So you can kind of mix and match these, but make sure you know where they go because you won't find them on other pieces of armor. So let's assume we're going into an endgame activity with anti-barrier and overload mods. I've decided that I'm using my AR for anti-barrier and my bow for overload. I'm going to need to go to my arms and then put on overload bow and anti-barrier auto rifle. I've already unlocked them in the artifact, but you also need to go onto your arms and slot this into your armor. So if we take these out for a second, I'll show you guys how you do that. These two hand mods in the middle here are going to house all of your anti-champion mods that are in that first column and the fusion rifle one that's towards the end of the artifact but to slot them it's going to cost 500 glimmer so you're just going to slot one in if you need a second one you just slot a second one in they're going to cost one energy each some of them cost more like i said the sword costs six and the fusion rifle costs six so you have to make sure you have enough energy on your armor to use them it doesn't matter what element your armor is all you need is two energy points to slot these two mods in here. Similarly, on our class item, we're gonna go in here, and if you wanna put this Thermoclassic Strike on here, it's gonna go in these two slots as well. I would recommend using that on a ranged solar or stasis melee, like a warlock stasis melee, the hunter stasis melee is great, the hunter knives can also work on the solar subclass. So the next thing we're going to discuss is how to actually stun the champions and what's the mechanic of those champions. All right, so here is our barrier servitor. You can see I've damaged him a little bit already, but we're going to damage just a little bit more and around a third health, they're going to go into their little anti-barrier right here. You can see him kind of do that animation and you're just going to shoot off the barrier with your anti-barrier auto rifle and then you can go back to whatever you're shooting with him he's probably going to go into another barrier here they like to try and hide behind stuff so you kind of have to get into a good spot and then you can shoot with whatever you want the only one that i really hate is the anti-barrier servitor like we saw there because the anti-barrier servitor really likes to immune all the enemies that are hanging out with it and so it becomes really super annoying to deal with. What I would recommend in that situation is to stun the barrier champion and then kill some of the stuff around it and then whittle the champion down that way. You can see a great example of that here with this anti-barrier servitor. You can see he can stun about like six of these little guys. These vandals can hurt a lot and they're just immune now. Plus this season in Season of the Lost, all we have is anti-barrier auto rifle and so it makes it really difficult to break that shield. But later in the video, we're gonna talk about some exotics that have anti-champion mods built into them, which could make your life a little bit easier. For overload champions, they are super annoying. <laughs> uh, some of them are going to teleport, like this captain that we're about to encounter up here. But you can see him teleporting all around. He's gonna shoot at me, teleport, shoot, teleport, shoot teleport he teleports really fast around the room these are your overload captains and all you have to do to stun them is just hit them once with the bow the bow is really great at stunning overload champions i highly recommend it the sword is nice too but the sword can sometimes be awkward especially if you're in high end game content now the other thing i want to mention about champions which we're going to be able to see with this overload you can see his health is already back up to 100 but with champions you're going to stun them with your bow like so and then as they get out of stun they're actually going to have this white ring around their little vines around their body. You can see it's white. And then when it stops being white, then you can stun them again. So they have a little bit of a cooldown period in which they cannot be stunned. So you would just hit him with everything you got while he's stunned. If you have stasis, that can sometimes knock these guys out of stun as well. Here, let me show you how to stun them with the melee since we had that on as well. There we go with the stun with the stasis melee. The captains are really hard to stun with your melee because they do teleport around. Different enemy factions are going to have different ways in which they're overloaded. Overloaded basically means that they're doing a lot of their 
abilities. So with captains, that's their teleport. With hobgoblins, it's going to be their little uh, purple homing rockets that they send down on you, basically, basically rockets. So it's good to know all the different abilities. So you can see it with stasis, the captains will actually kind of get in a glitched uh, stun and unstun because when they get completely frozen, it actually pulls them out of stun and then you can stun them right away. Now for overload, it can kind of be nice because you bypass that cooldown, but for some of the other champions, it's not as nice like unstoppables and sometimes barriers can get stuck in their barrier so you need to be careful if you are using stasis my fellow creator friend epic nng actually has a great video showing the goblin being stunned over and over you can use the lay monarch exotic bow poison to just immediately stun the overload champion there are some great bows for overload stunning but definitely go check out that video if you're interested in how you can combine stasis and lay monarch to just con constantly stun overload hobgoblins. I will leave a link down below. So finally, let's talk about unstoppables. These are probably the easiest champions to deal with. However, you don't want to be surprised uh, with one coming from behind you or something. You want to make sure you have eyes on them at all time because they will charge you and they do have that little cooldown period where their little vines are turning white but in order to use the unstoppable mod we've got it here on the sidearm you're going to want to aim down sights for a few seconds and then you see the gun light up like that and unstoppable shot appear on your left hand screen and that's how you know you're ready to stop the unstoppable Here's our unstoppable ogre, right? He's going to be very aggressive and just keep walking to us. But all we have to do is charge up that unstoppable shot and he is going to take a lot more damage. And we can utilize our finisher and he's out of here. Unstoppables are pretty easy once you get used to them. They will only chase you to like a certain area, but as long as you have your unstoppable shot charged and ready to go, they don't pose too much of a threat. We've got our unstoppable phalanx here so you guys can see a different enemy type. You can see he is rushing me pretty good but we're actually gonna try bastion on him this time rush me down now he does stop at some point so you kind of just want to figure out what that point is so you can kind of get your bearings we're going to aim down sights we see the unstoppable shot is locked and loaded now these guys are a little bit harder because they put their shield up, but as you can see, Bastion is a great option because there are multiple bolts there that are hitting him. So we get the shot off and we get that second shot to confirm the kill. So in addition to these artifact mods, we can also use some exotics that have these anti-champion mods intrinsically built into them. And we're going to go over those now. You use these the same way you would use your regular weapons with your artifact mods in order to stun the champion. First up, we're going to take a look at Bastion. This one will actually stagger on unstoppable champions as you can see here which is really really amazing for this season of the loss since we do have particle deconstruction which is going to give your fusion rifle amazing damage next up we've got three energy weapons divinity which is going to be strong against overload champions you really only need to tap this onto an overload and it will stun them it's a great tool in group content because you can also create that crit spot so if you do have divinity you can use it for overloads it's not not the best in solo content but it will work if you don't have anything else we've got ariana's vow which i believe is going to be used a lot by people this season because our only other option for anti-barrier is auto rifle this one is great against barrier champions it pretty much one shots their shield down so you don't have to worry about them getting their health back Lastly, in the energy slot, we have Devil's Rune, which is great at stunning unstoppable champions. However, we already have unstoppable sidearm in our artifact, so I don't think it's worth wasting an exotic slot on this weapon. You also have to use the laser part of the Devil's Rune to stun the unstoppable, so I think you're better off using a legendary sidearm. Moving on to our heavy, we've got one weapon, and that is the Lament the Sword, which is strong against anti-barrier. It has shield piercing effects only if you Rev it up first. So you need to hold to rev the blade and then you can pierce through those barriers. 
And then we're also going to give a nice honorable mention to the Athrus's Embrace, which is a fairly new exotic for Hunter. This is actually going to give your weighted knife the ability to stop unstoppable champions. This is pretty cool. However, to get this weighted knife, you need to get rapid precision hits and then land your knife on that unstoppable. So there's a lot of ifs, ands, or buts in here, built in here, but it can work if you're in a three-man group. Other people have unstoppable and you want to run this weighted knife. Also keep in mind that solar is also part of thermoclassic strike. So if you had those exotic arms on as hunter and then you also had thermoclassic strike, now you have a way to stop unstoppables and overloads. So just to recap for you guys, anti-barrier, you need to shoot down the barrier shield. Overload, you need to stun and then burst down before they can regen their health. And for unstoppable, you have to aim down sights until you see that unstoppable shot pop up on the left side of your screen and your gun glows white. And then shooting the unstoppable will stun them. And you need to unlock and then slot the artifact mods in order to have these weapons become anti-barrier. But there are some exotics that you can use that have champion mods on them intrinsically. And that's going to do it for how to stun these champions so that you guys know when you're going into more endgame content how to do it for each of the three enemy types. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more new light type videos like this and you're brand new to Destiny and there's some things that are really confusing or that you don't understand, definitely leave them in the comments below. And if we get enough responses, I will definitely cover those topics. But for now, I will see you in the next one. Bye.